November 10th is when I had my two year anniversary of this reef. However, it seems like I'm always gone on the 10th. I'm finally home. This is February 10th. So this is the two year and three month anniversary of the 400 gallon reef. A funny thing that I don't think I've mentioned before is that when people come over, they always say this is a 400 gallon because from the front, it doesn't look that big because I have the reef in the middle of the tank instead of leaning against the back glass where you'd see all that front to back depth. This tank is three feet front to back. And when you get a view from the end, which I'll show you in a little bit, you'll see, oh yeah, it's quite a bit wider than I expected. From the front, all these corals are coming up toward the glass, it makes it look a little smaller. The update for this reef has been, it's not really dramatic. Uh, one thing happened about six weeks ago, I'd say. The nitrates shot up on this tank. I mean, they went way up. I uh, use an API test kit and it was measuring for the longest time around seven ppm nitrate. And all of a sudden it was blood red, which is like 160. And I thought, well, that's crazy. That's not possible. And then I was thinking, well, the kit is old, but then if the kit is old, why would it suddenly give me a bad reading? So I went to the fish store and bought a new test kit, measured it again, and it was definitely blood red. So I did about 600 gallons of water changes in about two weeks flat which was basically 55 to 60 gallons per session, four days in a row, refill the 250 gallon container with water and salt, let it mix, and then do four more days of water changes. And then I did another one or two after that. So I'm probably up to 700, maybe 800 gallons of water changes. And nitrates are staying around 20, still higher than I want it to be. I also about four weeks ago started a bio pellet reactor and refilled it with biospheres and that should help kick in very soon and start bringing those numbers down further. I'm not really sure why they went up. I can't really explain it. I'm kind of kind of guessing that maybe the refugium has gotten past its life expectancy. I only pan down to that for you. This sump was set up in 2011 and the refugium was set up at that time too. Uh, just to bring you up to speed in case you aren't aware of the history of my tank. When I first set up the reef in 2011, after 13 months, it sprung a leak and it took 18 months to get the tank resolved, replaced and reset up. But I kept the sump running the whole time and it supported the livestock going to a temporary aquarium that was in my fish room while I waited. So the refugium is now over four years old, probably four years and oh, pretty much four years in a month. And I think the sand bed in there, cause it's got a deep sand bed down in there, which you can almost make out. It's just covered in sediment. So my plan, the weather's beautiful at this time of year, which makes no sense. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab all the sand out, wash it out in the driveway, get it nice and clean, rinse off all the plants in some used tank water, get rid of that cyano that seems to keep building up on top of the macroalgae and reset it. And I think that will help get some of these nitrates back under control that crept up out of nowhere. I wanted to point out that these clownfish in the sea bay anemone are still with me and they're still all 11. And it's been a year since they were introduced to you guys on YouTube and into my reef. So I'm really happy they're doing so well. Uh, what has happened to the corals because of the nitrate spike? The big coral on the top here, it took a hit at the foundation. The very bottom where the coral touches the rock turned white and it was slowly spreading across the colony. And I didn't really know what was going on. And I was kind of thinking, could it be that it's in the shade and that's why it's suffering. But when it kept spreading, I was like, no, no, this is something else. And that's when I discovered the nitrate problem, which so strangely, just a few weeks before didn't exist. Anyway, um, I think the white spreading has stopped and I'm happy about that. And overall, the corals are doing great. You know, I mean, I really can't complain too much. It just was kind of a bummer to lose part of the tissue, but the reef is still doing quite well. It's rebounding. I didn't overreact or do anything crazy. I just handled it gradually and got those numbers back in check as best I could being the hobbyist that I am. This is the view from the end of the tank and looking at it from this side, looking all the way to the other end of the tank is 84 inches long, three feet wide. And it's probably my favorite view, even though those two conductors coming down the top, I wish they weren't there, but water has to get back into the tank somehow. And I chose to do it from above because I just feel safer than drilling holes in the bottom of my tank. I know that sounds a little, uh, um, I don't know, OCD or concerning, but I just felt this was a smarter move for me. 
Uh, the Gorgonian right there in the very front dead center in this video is the one that came out of Joe's tank that you saw in the 20,000 gallon reef. I've had this coral for about three years now. It was probably about three or four inches tall and now it looks like it's closer to between 12 and 15 inches in size with many arms. So it's doing really well. Behind it you can see all kinds of hammer corals. Uh, there's the staghorn colony at the top and you can make out some of the white at the bottom of the colony I was explaining to you right up there. The monopora are all doing well. I um, checked phosphate today and it was less than 0.1 so I'm not overly concerned with phosphate at the moment but and I'm going to mention this in my video because it seems like I have to keep telling everyone this I do not run GFO I have not used GFO since 2004 I tried it for nine months I tried a bunch of different brands and had zero luck I use phosphate RX as needed to remove phosphate from the water and I love it there's my mystery wrasse and my flame angel both of these fish have been with me for four years the 60 gallon anemone cube is doing very well. There are probably about 30 anemones in this tank at this time. Lots of them are little ones, don't let me mislead you. There are, I believe, three or four of those Sherman Rose anemones. There's probably five or six of the original bubble tip anemone. The original ones are actually right there. That's my very first one from 2003. And then there's a lot of these little ones at the top here. Right up, sorry, <laughs> right there. There's probably at least 10 up there in that spot. And then there's one way down there, see it? They only get to be about two inches in diameter and then they split. And they were green bubble tips. Now they don't look that green in my tank and they don't look like bubble tips like usual. But there's lots of these anemones for all these clownfish. And I haven't even revealed specifically on YouTube yet, but this tank has 17 clownfish in it right now. There's one female. There's 16 clownfish that came from Tammy's Reef. Remember Tammy's 800 gallon reef? And she gave me a bunch of clownfish to put in this tank to make it more interesting. And I love feeding these guys at night. They are adorable. They all come to the surface. They're excited to eat. And just seeing all those clowns at one time just makes me so happy. And finally, the big reveal, the 60 gallon frag tank is cycled. It's running. And look at those tiny fish on the left side of the screen. There are nine red spot glass cardinal fish in there and they're very peaceful fish so I'm not going to put anything in there that's aggressive and this tank will have frags in there from a main reef that will allow me to clear out some clutter out of the main tank uh, possibly sell some frags at frag swaps or make them available for sale on my website I don't know I uh, haven't really made up my mind on that one quite yet but I do want to create some space in the reef and I'd like to be able to share some frags more easily so I set up this tank and underneath it is all the equipment that I built myself. I made this tank, I'm very proud of it. And um, the cycle was 21 days uh, using a shrimp. And now, and that's gonna be all part of another video coming up. I'm testing out a couple of lights above the tank called Angel Lighting that um, they sent me for a product review many months ago and I'm finally getting the time to test it now that the tank is running and has livestock in it. I've had many people ask me for an update on the NIO skimmer. And that is the very next video that's coming out. I am very happy with it, so there's a huge thumbs up. But I'll go into detail, and I hope that you guys will enjoy that video. And it should come out, oh, well, let's see if we can do it by this weekend. That's kind of what I'm hoping. The uh, skimmer has worked out very well, and that's all I'm going to say. The three reactors that I'm running is the calcium reactor, and then in the back is a biopellet reactor, and then in the front is for granulated activated carbon. These two pumps are being replaced with two of the Vectra L1 pumps. I've been waiting because I had to get the frag system going so I could change all the plumbing out. And now that the frag system's up and I can start making these changes, I can go ahead and remove these two pumps. And the back side of my reef. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff up against the glass, which is why I need to declutter. Remove all those fungia plates, get out some extra bird's nests that doesn't need to be in there, pull some hammers, trim some of the monopora, and then do some cleaning and maybe make some room for some new frags. This is the old frag tank and I've got the dead center of the screen showing you how much the front panel has bowed. This tank is four years old and it's eight inches tall and it's rimless made of 3 8 cast acrylic. But when people say I want a rimless tank made of acrylic I always tell them do not do it because you want the rim that keeps it nice and strong. 
I'm gonna move this camera up so you can get a better look. This is only holding 10 gallons of water. And yet, look how much it bowed out. If you were to measure from the center outward, both directions, front and of course on the back side, it has spread three quarters of an inch. It's done. And it was doing this from the very beginning, honestly. I mean, it's, yes, it's lasted, but it looks horrible. I would not trust this tank in anyone else's possession. And when people have asked me, hey, would you sell me that tank or give it to me? I'm like, nope, it's going in the trash. Instead, when you set up a tank made of acrylic, I recommend that you have a nice rim on the top that keeps it nice and strong and sturdy and still gives you full access. This keeps the salt creep inside, it keeps splashes inside, keeps the walls straight the way it's supposed to be. I'll be happy when this tank is gone. Honestly, it's sitting over my power station anyway. I took a big chance putting it here and pulling it out is a wise move. I hope you enjoyed this update and I am super excited how greatly you guys appreciated the 20,000 gallon reef because I had no idea how that was gonna play out, but it's gotten tons of views. Subscribers have grown past 13,000. Thanks, you guys. That's awesome of you that you keep coming back for more. And all those emails and PMs and texts and messages and questions on YouTube saying, what about this or what about that? I'm gonna do my best to answer all of those. So thank you for tuning in. Another one's coming out. Like I said, the next video will be about the NIO skimmer, which I'm very excited to share with you. Thank you, like it, share it, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, and I'll see you real soon.